Uh, question six related to turning effect or the moment. Figure 2.1 shows a uniform. Whenever they use the term uniform, it means the weight is acting at the center. So if this is a uniform object, the weight will act at the center. On a figure, draw a label, draw and label an arrow to show the weight of a slab acting on its center, uh, at its uh, center of the mass. So we'll draw an arrow, represent the weight. So this will be the weight of an object. Then the second part. Calculate the moment of a 40 Newton force about point D. So this statement, whenever they use the term, a statement is there about point D or about certain point, that point is the pivot. So it means D is acting as a pivot. So a force of 40 Newton is acting. So we, to calculate the turning effect, first which direction it will cause a rotation or turning effect, it will try to cause an anti-clockwise rotation to this slab. And how to calculate that turning effect? That is force, which is 40, multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot. So what is the distance from the pivot? We have two distances. One is 0.3, another one is 0 0.6. So which one is the perpendicular distance from between the force and the pivot? So this 0.6 is a perpendicular distance because when you complete, this will be 90 degrees. So we always take the force, the distance which is perpendicular to the force. So force is equals to 40 here and a distance is 0.6, so 40 multiplied by 0 0.6. So 40 into 0.6, what's the answer? 24. So that is equals to 24 Newton meter. So the turning effect, the clockwise due to the anti-clockwise rotation due to the force of 40 Newton is 24 Newton meter. Then the next part, the moment about point D, a moment of W about point D and the weight, because the mass is equals to 18. So if the mass is 18 gram, 18 kilogram, what about the weight? The weight will be equal to 180 Newton because Weight is mass multiplied by gravity. So, a force of 18 Newton is there, 180 Newton is there, that is acting downward. And we have to calculate the moment or turning effect from point D. So, what is the distance between the weight and the, the perpendicular distance between the weight and point D? 0.3. 0 0.3 is a total distance, like because the weight is acting at the center. So 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is a total base, the length of this base side, but we need half of it because the weight is acting at the center. So the distance will be 0 0.15. So weight which is acting is equals to 180 Newtons. And the distance from the pivot is 0.15, not 0 0.30. Because we always take the distance from the pivot, not the total distance. The distance between the force, the perpendicular distance between the force and pivot. So 180, so this will cause an anti-clockwise rotation. So it will be 180 to 0 0.15. So 180 to 0 0.15. What's the answer for this? So this will be 27 Newton meter. So weight is causing a 27 Newton meter and a force of 40 Newton is causing a rotation of 24 Newton meter. What will happen? This object will roll over or tip over or it will remain stable. The turning effect due to a 40 Newton force is 24 Newton meter and turning effect due to the weight is 27 Newton meter. What will happen to this object? It will tip over or it will remain stable. Remain stable. It will remain stable. Why? Because 
the moment or the turning effect due to the weight is more than the turning effect due to the force which we are applying. So the next part, the ground is rough so that it does not slide. State what happened if the horizontal force is gradually increased. So if we increase this force gradually, like right now it will not topple, it will not roll tip over as the turning effect due to the weight is more than turning effect due to the 40 Newton. But the, what if we increase this force, like first it is 40, then 45, then 50, then 60 and so on. So in that case, what will happen? It, it this will stop it because the turning effect due to the force will increase. In question seven, this question is related to equilibrium. Write down name of three man-made devices which we are using every day which depends, their action depends on the turning effect or the moment. Can you name some devices which we are using? Wrench. Wrench, good. What else? A spanner, wrench, scissor. So a spanner, wrench, scissor, you can mention. Then figure shows a uniform rod which is acted by force AB upon three forces. State two reasons why rod is not in equilibrium. Look, when it is in equilibrium, there is no resultant moment, no resultant force. But why it is not in equilibrium? Because there is a resultant force. There will be a resultant force and there will be a resultant moment. How we know there is a resultant force? Because if these all forces are equal in magnitude, if I say this is 10 Newton, this is 10 Newton, this is also 10 Newton. So two of the forces, 10 Newton and 10 Newton are acting downward, which is make 20 Newton. And one of the force of 10 Newton is acting upward. So it means there will be a resultant force of 10 Newton downward. So why this is not in equilibrium? Because there's a resultant force and there will be a resultant turning effect or the clockwise moment will not be equal to anti-clockwise moment. Figure 3.2 shows a uniform rod. When we say object is uniform, the so weight is acting at the center. But this weight, in this case, the weight will not cause any rotation because the weight is acting on the pivot. So weight is acting on the pivot, it does not cause any rotation. The force of 12 Newton is acting downward at a distance of 0.3 from the pivot. We have to calculate the force exerted by the spring. So a spring will also apply a force. The force of a spring is example F. Whenever we solve such question, which is related to turning effect, we always assume that the total clockwise moment is equals to total anti-clockwise moment. So the total clockwise moment force multiplied by distance from the pivot. How much is this distance? If the total is one meter long, how much, what is the value for this distance? 0 0.5. So because the weight is, this, it is pivoted at the center, so this is 0 0.5. So clockwise moment is F into 0 0.5. An anti-clockwise moment is 12 into 0 0.3. So 12, so when we equate this, we'll assume the total clockwise moment. Is equals to total anti-clockwise moment. Or there will be no turning effect as this object is in equilibrium. So that will be equal to 12 into 0 0.3 or F into 0 0.5 is equal to 12 into 0 0.3. 0 0.5 is multiplied, other side will be divided. So it will be F is equal to 12 into 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5. So that is equal to 7.2 Newton. And the next part they ask why we did not consider the weight in the calculation. So 
So because the weight is acting on the pivot, so it does not cause any turning effect or rotation. That's why we did not include. Explain why weight is not necessary to know, uh, or why it is not necessary to know the weight of PQ. So why we don't need the weight of PQ because weight is acting on the pivot. So its perpendicular distance is zero, or its turning effect is zero. A stationary body acted upon by number of the forces state to condition which apply where object is at rest or equilibrium. So the two conditions for object to be in equilibrium, there will be no resultant force and there will be no resultant moment. Use the clockwise and anti-clockwise moment about point H. So they mentioned about point H, so it means H is a pivot or a point of rotation. So this 20 Newton, which direction it causes a rotation? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Anti. So as it is causing an anti-clockwise rotation, how much is this 20 multiplied by distance? So what? We always take the total distance from the pivot. How much is this distance? What's the total distance from the pivot? 500. 500, because 380 plus 120, that's 500. So when we multiply, 5 multiplied by 2, 10, and then 3, 0, so it will be 10,000. The total anti-clockwise moment is 10,000. Now we need, this force is acting upward, so it will also cause a turning effect on the moment. And that will be clockwise rotation. So how much is this clockwise rotation F multiplied by distance from the pivot? 120. So if the object is in equilibrium, the total anti-clockwise moment is equal to total clockwise moment. And the total anti-clockwise moment that is 10,000 total clockwise moment F into 120. When we simplify 10,000 divided by 120 will give us F. So it will be 10,000 divided by 120. What's the answer for this? So it will be 83 point Newton. So again, we solve this question by considering the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments are balanced or equal. So all these questions, symmetry is there, uh, like the pattern is there, that we always consider the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments are equal. Then state the condition for object to be in equilibrium, no resultant force, no resultant turning effect. Then figure of 3.1 shows a diagram of an arm which is acted upon uh, by different forces. A weight with our, we are holding a weight of 120 Newton. The force of 20 Newton is a weight of the arm which is acting at the center of the mass and F is the force of the muscle which is acting upward. By taking the moment about point P, so if we want to take moment about point P, P is the point of rotation or P is the pivot. So a force of 20 Newton and a force of 120 Newton, both are causing a clockwise moment. This is causing clockwise, this is also causing a clockwise. And the force due to the muscles, that is causing an anti-clockwise rotation. But if it is in equilibrium, the total anti-clockwise and clockwise moments will be equal. So the total anti-clockwise moment, that is force multiplied by distance from the pivot, that's two. Equal to total clockwise moment, so force, this force is 20, multiplied by distance from the pivot is 15. There's another force of 120, that is also causing a clockwise rotation. So 120 multiplied by distance from the pivot, that is 33. So 20 into 15, why? Because 20 is the force and 15 is the distance from the pivot. 
and another force is there 120 newton force and a distance from the pivot is 30 feet that's why it is multiplied by 30. So when we simplify this uh, 20 into 15 that would be 300 plus 120 multiplied by 33 120 to 33, what's the answer for this? 120 multiplied 3,690. 3, mm -hmm. No, 3,960. 3, 3,960. So when we sum, it will come because, so F2 to do, so when we sum them, it will be uh, 3,960 plus 300. It will be 4,000. Uh, 260. That is F into 2. But we need F, the force, so F is equal to 4260 divided by 2. So that is equal to 2130 Newton. So this force is 2130 Newton. That is the force of the muscles. Then the force acted on the forearm at point P, calculate this force and state the direction. Because this object is in equilibrium, so we already calculated when object is in equilibrium, the total upward force equal to total downward force. So we calculated this force is 2130 Newton. And for object to be in equilibrium, the total upward force must be equal to total downward force. So the total upward force, the force which is acting upward, that is 2130. So total downward force is 20 plus 120. So, but this won't be balanced. So which direction the force on the P should apply? There should be another force on P and that direction should be down. Why it should be down? Because when object is in equilibrium, or object is balanced, the total upward force must equal to total downward force. So there must be another force which is acting downward, which make it balanced. So if I say that force is P, so when we simplify 2130 is equals to 140 plus P. 140 is added, other side subtracted, so 2130 minus 140 is equals to P. So it is 1,990 Newton. And what is the direction of that force 1,990 Newton that is acting downward? Why downward? Because the object is in equilibrium. So the total upward force is equal to total downward force. The upward force was 2,130. So the downward force should also be 2,130. Is it uh, clear this part? How we work out the find the force? So this was exercised uh, related to the turning effect or the moment.